Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, gonna kind of go away from what most people are probably subscribed to my channel for, which is the outdoor uh, hunting cam videos, and maybe some of you subscribe because of the home improvement videos. Uh, but this video, we're gonna talk about what's called the uh, needle bar modification to this Chinese shoe patcher machine. You know, and these are great little machines. You know, I know some people love them, and I love mine, and some people love to hate them because they can't get, never get it adjusted right. But uh, so we're we're gonna talk, like I said, the needle bar uh, modification. This here is the needle bar. Uh, it, it extends up through the cylinder and connects into this this uh, flexible or this uh, rotational uh, arm here, and that's what moves your your needle up and down. And the reason we're going to modify it is because I want to run a larger thread and in order to do so I have to use a larger needle. So when it comes stock the largest you're going to be able to run on this machine is a 140-22 and that's good for up to thread, thread size uh, 135. And I know maybe you don't know what I'm talking about but this is and it's going to be difficult to, to, to get a perspective but uh, this red thread right here this one right there that's that's a 135 okay and I want to go to this larger thread here which is a 207 so in order to be able to sew this larger thread I'm going to need to bump up the needle size but I can't do that without modifying this because um, as it comes it, it only accepts a uh, needle that has a flat side on the shank and um, this is not it let's see here this is a round shank that I've bought since I've done the modification but this is the shank right here and uh, as, as it comes the only way you can use uh, or the only needles you can use is that it'll have a flat ground surface on one side of the shank so in order to use the larger uh, industrial needles which I've got here this is a 130 21 uh, they all come round shank and so they won't work in the needle bar as it sits so we're gonna need to modify this and, and before we get into it let me say a disclaimer that um, you're responsible for your own modifications and if you follow my directions and you mess it up or one I'm not liable basically you know do this at your own risk so I'm making the video because I actually just I've just did this I've done a couple projects now about about a week ago and I would look online to see if I could find any videos on it because the pictures worth a thousand words yada 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 and uh, I couldn't find any now there's a Facebook page it's called uh, Chinese shoe patcher uh, and just just look up the uh, the the you know do a search on Facebook and there's a file in the file section that describes doing this um, this needle bar uh, modification but again you know I'd rather see a video and uh, I, and I put my own little twist on it and I'll explain that when we get to it but anyway this needle bar here is what we're going to modify and what we have to do is first of all we're going to take it out and this is your uh, this is your clamp that holds the needle in place we'll take that off and then we'll undo this screw right here and loosen that up and then we'll drop the needle bar down see it slides and it's really nice slides really nice now uh, because oh, excuse me when I took it out I uh, the, before I greased it up really well before I put it back in so we're gonna go ahead and remove this uh, arm right here nothing to it it just fits on a pin in the back there and uh, slides on and off so anyway that's the here's the screw that we loosened in order to uh, get the needle bar free now all we're going to do is slide this needle bar up through that cylinder and bring it out um, you know before when I did this before it actually took a little bit of uh, 
it, it actually took a little bit of effort to get it out because it wasn't greased up and, and uh, as nice as it is now. So what we're going to do in, is modify this groove right here. And what we have to do is round it because uh, as it comes from the, from the shipper or from the factory, it's flat and, and then the flat part of the needle shank uh, rests up against the flat that's ground into this needle bar and when we're doing this we have to be careful that we don't remove there's a block right here um, and so we're only going to be working in this portion of the needle bar right here up to this point right there and what that is is that's a stop uh, for your needle and it keeps it from you know the physics you know every action has an equal and opposite reaction or you know like a recoil of a gun or whatnot well when you jam the needle down into the material it's wanting to force it up and that block prevents it from uh, being forced up it counteracts the, uh, ac the, the axial force uh, parallel to the uh, to the needle bar anyway get too much physics anyway so and the file that I talked about talked about uh, on the Facebook page for modifying this this needle bar it says to use a round file and I live in a small town and the smallest file the round files I could get were basically chainsaw files for sharpening the chainsaw chains and it was not going to work it's way too big for this and I guess I could have ordered it online but then I started thinking about it even with a round file man that's a lot of work um, you know for me anyway to, to round that out in there so what I did is I have a Dremel tool and this is this is just the uh, flexible shaft it's actually attached to the motor on the other end but uh so what I went and bought is what's called a uh, engraving cutter and it's a size 113 right there and it's got the eighth inch shank and basically all it is I mean it's really tiny it's hard to see but there's a little ball right there and this is a uh, high strength tool steel and you know the needle bar at best is a mild steel so this is definitely harder than the needle bar and I use this to cut my channel out to round it out and again it's already done I'm not going to do it so all I did very carefully slowly is I went in there and just work this this uh, burr this cutting head back and forth and it does not take a lot okay and I stopped frequently to uh, to put my needle in there and to test the fit and to make sure that it was going to fit up in there and tightly and you know fit snugly so you got to be kind of careful you want to make sure you you evenly cut this out you don't want to cut too deep here and not deep enough there because then if you do then when your needle sits in there it's going to sit at an angle like this you don't want that you want it to sit perpendicular or be in parallel with your needle bar here so that's part of the modification now if you try this and you screw it up it's not the end of the world uh, Bantam Tack uh, is a website Bantam Tack and Saddle I think and they specialize in these machines in fact you can buy these machines already um, all polished up and you know you pay about a hundred dollars more for them and they, they go through and and do a lot of things that you need to do if you buy this just rough they you know they uh, smooth out the castings because I, I, generally you're paying about a hundred bucks for this machine so they're not put you know the factory's not putting a hell of a lot of effort into it so that they can keep prices low so uh, you can buy one from Bantam Tack already set up I don't know if they do the needle bar um, modifications but anyway if you if you try this and you screw it up you can buy a new needle bar from Bantam Tack and Saddle just like you can buy tension discs and needles and thread and whatnot from them um, I, th I think I already covered it but if not I'm gonna say it one more time once you do this modification you can no longer go back to the flat shank uh, needles 
you have to continue to use the round shank needles and like I said the advantage to this is so I can go to a larger thread I use this larger needle and the what's nice about these needles as well is the fact that they come with what's called a leather point and it basically punches a, a diamond shaped hole just like your sewing all would so anyway that's part of the modification and again you know just get take it nice and slow a little bit at a time stopping frequently to test fit your needle you don't want to go too deep you want to go just deep enough to where you round out that bottom in there and then you will be able to fit your round shank needles in there and they'll fit you know they'll, they'll fit well so that's just part of the modification and the other part I'm gonna I'm just gonna describe it because I'm not I had to take my I had to take my uh, my sewing machine off my mount and flip it upside down because you got a couple things you need to do here uh, on this uh, on this arm right here so we're gonna go ahead and pop this up now if you're familiar with the machine you know you have this uh, bobbin cover right here and I'm gonna lift this up a little bit you know we got our bobbin there right here and this is the bobbin cover so with the larger size needle you're gonna need to enlarge a couple holes and the first hole you're gonna need to enlarge is right here I hope I'm getting this in frame right there you need to enlarge that hole so that the needle is not going to be banging against the edge then the second hole you need to enlarge is let me get this thread out of the way is right here in the arm itself and like I didn't when you're when you're using this you don't have room to go in from the top I know I'm banging the camera around a little bit you don't have room to go in from the top so what I did like I said is I took my machine off the mount here you know I got it mounted and so I took it off and I flipped it upside down so that I could ream out this hole right here in the arm itself so that the needle would would uh, go down and come back up without uh, without hitting anything so anyway that's basically it now you got to put everything back together so we'll go ahead and sorry I know about banging the camera around we'll go ahead and put our needle bar back in and we'll just if I hold it in place a little bit and then we'll go ahead and put that arm back on its pin this clamp here and now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of set it um, rough roughly where we want it to go so now we got that clamped and it's going to stay in place then we go ahead and we put our needle in now in order one of the things that not a lot of people talk about uh, with these machines and people search for it uh, because they have a malfunction one of the things you want to make sure that you do is that your thread hole right here um, it needs to be it needs to be uh, parallel or uh, let's see how do I want to say it hell I don't know I'm not a physicist but uh, when you put it in there this hole needs to be exactly or as close as you can get a parallel with your arm so this hole right now is right here so when we put it in we need to make sure that it's turned and I put it with the, there's a there's a groove here on the back side of the needle that goes towards your uh, your wheel back here your hand crank so we're gonna go ahead and put the needle in it's not the easiest thing to do uh, looking at it from my perspective but I don't want to jostle the camera anymore and I have so anyway so basically that's it and you want to make sure it goes all the way up against that stop that hopefully you didn't mess up and we're just gonna kinda tighten this up a little bit let me turn that 
so that everything stays. So right now it's just kind of rough. Um, so looking at it, I know my needle bar is basically in the position I want. I don't, I don't need to rotate it at all because I'm looking at my clamp here. But my needle itself is a little cocked. So again, I want to make sure that, holes, that hole is uh, parallel with the arm here. So there's my hole. And if I was looking at down this arm, it'd be straight through that hole. That's the best way I can explain that. So I'm going to tighten that up. Now, the other adjustment, so anyway, we got that in place, and it's up against the stop, and we got our clamp tightened down. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the depth is proper, properly set because this needle has to go... Uh, down inside the machine and it has to interact with that hook on the uh, on the bobbin uh, carrier so the depth has to be correct in order to, to, to do that so what we're going to do is we're going to lower that needle to to its very bottom and basically you, you know you want to be careful because the needle's sharp but you want you put your finger under here and you want to just barely feel that needle. Uh, there's a hole under here. And it's about right, which is surprising since I just went by, uh, kind of went by feel. But So what I did is I loosened that up. Let me go ahead and put this down. And now I know my, my machine is adjusted so that the machine itself is is putting it at the very bottom so now I'm just gonna move this needle bar up and down like this until I just feel the point of that needle right there and then I'm gonna tighten this back up like that actually kinda of moved on me a little bit right about there Okay, so I got that tight, and again, you know, tight is relative. You want it nice and snug, but you're not trying to, you know, uh, you know, you're not building a car here, so you don't need to be too terrible on the torsion or on the torque that you're putting this uh, tightening these fasteners down to. So basically, that's it. And then you know, I don't have it threaded, but you can run it. To make sure that you know you're you're about where you want and you you're at where you want it see and I guess I didn't have it as at the bottom as well as I thought I did so let me go ahead and loosen this up because it's sticking out a little bit too much at the bottom there right about there like I said you just want to barely feel that needle and now perfect and that's it um, that that's basically how to do it in a nutshell and I hope this video helps somebody out like I said you know I, I, I could have ordered a file and waited a few days but I went to the hardware and I got me one of these and I used it for everything for the reaming of that flat part of the needle bar so that a round needle would fit in it and uh, the, the two holes here in the cover and in the sewing machine arm itself um, so everything worked out really well and like I said I've, I have sewn with it already as you can see these are some of my practices this is uh you know when I set in thread tension and whatnot and that's the other thing too is you got to be uh, you got to mess with your tension now because you're, you're running a thicker thread uh, one of the things that I do as well um, you know these bobbins are actually not that big <clears throat> and so when I'm when I'm sewing with this larger 207 thread 
my bobbin is actually the 135 thread and the reason for that is if I put on the 207 thread on these bobbins it's not going to hold very much and you know basically every 12 to 18 inches I'll have to stop to change out bobbins and it doesn't affect the strength uh, to a degree that you have to worry about you know the, the the strength of the stitch being that you have a lighter thread on the bottom than you do on the top um, it's still going to be uh, a very uh, durable and strong stitch so basically that's it um, I hope again I hope the video helps somebody out and uh, questions comments you know go ahead and ask them in the uh, comment section and I'll try to answer as best as I can all right thanks for watching